All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and it looks like the Washington Commanders have officially released Logan Thomas. Now that's two. Charles Leno and Logan Thomas getting cut, and apparently we cut Nick Gates as well, and I'm going to talk about that in a separate video, why that is the funniest cut that we made so far. That cut is crazy. Stay tuned for that after this one, but I want to spend enough time to just specifically focus on Logan Thomas in this video because not only do I want to talk about it from the Logan Thomas side and why it made sense to cut him and the fact that I'm surprised that he didn't even get cut last year but also i want to take a look at it from the same angles that i did with the charles leno's cut first of all how much money do we save how much cap space do we have now are we number one in cap space because after the charles leno's cut it's actually crazy we weren't but now with the logan thomas cut maybe we are and then most importantly how are we going to replace logan thomas we have three options we have free agency the draft and also some talent already on this roster that with this elite coaching staff that we're bringing in that's known for developing players and getting the most out of guys that may be able to turn one of these guys that's already here into a starting level dual threat tight end we're going to explore all three options talk about all of them the best draft options there what rounds we maybe could potentially get them which best free agent options are out there and how much they may potentially cost per year do we have the money to afford them along with potentially getting an edge rusher and an offense alignment most notably tackle we're gonna dive into all of that and more but before we do make sure you still follow that like button still follow the subscription button and still follow the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time i release the formats of an opinionated video just like this one with everything going on today i'm about to end up releasing like five six videos because I still already had other videos I was planning on working on. So we'll see. So make sure you stay tuned and make sure you have that bell next to the subscription button clicked in. Make sure you stiff arm it, Heisman it if you got to, because you'll, then you'll get a notification each and every time I release these videos rather than maybe getting a notification for one out of the six. And then that notification happening like three or four days later, if then, if you ever get one. So make sure you have that hit in. That's very important, just as important as subscribing. And of course, make sure you leave a like on the way out. And of course, like like I said, I have so much content on the way. Film sessions for a lot of these draft prospects. I know the combine is going on right now. It's so much going on. I want to watch the combine so I can root for my Georgia Bulldogs that's testing. But all of this commander stuff takes priority. So I'm just going to have to go back and look at that stuff later. So much going on. I have y'all covered on everything. Draft, free agency. You know, free agency is within like less than two weeks now. Like it's about to start getting crazy. I got to work on my team needs video. I got to work on my favorite free agency targets for every position of need. All of that. So stay tuned. But let's go ahead and get to this video right now. Let's get all right so this all started when mike garafalo tweeted the washington commanders are releasing tight end logan thomas sources say Thomas was due $6.5 million this upcoming season, including a $500,000 roster bonus later this month. Logan Thomas, 32 years old, and actually will be 33 before the season starts, had 55 catches for 496 yards and four touchdowns last season. His highest output in all three categories since 2020. And I think that's pretty noteworthy. I mean, I guess trending wise he was starting to get better and better ever since like the collapse of like 2021 and 2022 2023 was definitely better for him but it wasn't good enough and let's start with the fact that first of all i knew it i feel like most of y'all knew it this should not be a surprise to anybody if you cut charles leno to save cap space with the goal of potentially finding an upgrade at the position then it only made sense to do the same thing with tight end with Logan Thomas sitting over there, especially with the injuries that he's had, the age at 32 years old as of right now, but will be 33 before the season starts, I believe, which makes those injuries a little bit scarier because the older you get, the harder it is for you to recover from the same exact injuries, let alone you're more susceptible to, to gaining even more injuries and suffering more of those. And at least Charles Leno has been extremely durable the past three years. He's been very dependable. 
even though he does have some hip surgery coming up on the way soon so that's probably why one of the reasons why we ended up cutting him to save that cap space there but logan thomas he doesn't even have like the whole durable label that charles leno has at least charles leno can lay his hat on the fact that he was strong in the community and i think a lot of people are underrating how much they're gonna miss charles leno in the dmv community i really think people are definitely going to be like man it, it doesn't feel the same because charles leno was arguably putting in the the most work out of any commanders football player as far as the community goes but also the one thing he can lay his hat on is how available he was logan thomas on the other hand nope he hasn't been very durable at all and i was rooting for this to work out since we signed him especially after that one good season he had but between the injuries the age and the propensity to fumble once he reaches a certain threshold of targets it, it was just pretty much destined to be i mean honestly i thought there was a chance that he would get cut last offseason this time last year so it just seemed like a done deal going into this season i already talked about it weeks ago months ago that charles leno and logan thomas with several videos i've spoken about it in live streams those two are very likely to get cut i named other potential cap cuts if the commanders really really want to save cap space but those were the only two that were in my realistic more than likely going to happen category and now it's happened I mean it literally seemed like for Logan Thomas specifically fumbling wise that if you gave him the ball enough times in one single game he was destined to fumble and this next regime is like nah I'm good we're not dealing with that especially with a tight end that's injury prone on top of all of that and then he's up there in age when we're trying to rebuild this roster or according to Dan Quinn recalibrate but either way we're more than likely going with some sort of a youth movement and they probably prefer to go get like a younger tight end to develop and grow up with the new and young quarterback that they're potentially going to draft at number two overall to go ahead and bring them in at the same time and they can grow and develop together and have that chemistry going for hopefully 10 plus years down the road and then on top of all of that you're gonna have a fumbling problem come on dog while also costing the team more money than they're willing to allow you to hit the cap for so this was just pretty obvious now i've been hoping that we would have gotten that 2020 version of logan thomas again but we never did and we never really got close again this 2023 season was the closest we got but it still wasn't that close and i can admit that a lot of it was not his fault some of it was his fault which is the reason why he's getting cut coaching can't fix everything but at the same time a lot of it honestly was not his fault to be completely honest man he did he got done dirty by the previous regime in quite a few ways and this is the second real move by this commander's regime led by general managers adam peters I mean, because again, at first we signed practice squad players Mason Brooks and Casimir Allen like two weeks ago. So that was technically our first move. But cutting Charles Leno was our first real move. And then that was like an hour ago, maybe a little bit more than that. And now we have our second real move, which is cutting Logan Thomas. So Adam Peters is already having a huge impact on the future of this franchise already cutting two starters from this team let's not forget the fact that we're cutting two starters these aren't just random guys these are two starters and technically when we get to nick gates that's a third one kind of even though he got benched so you know do with that as you will with that we'll, we'll discuss that in that video separately and commander's twitter man is hilarious because they are celebrating like we won a super bowl like party at such and such house type of thing but it's crazy even though cutting players on a team that already has big holes on it is scary like this is like we already had i felt like a needed tackle a need at tight end a needed center which we're going to talk about in a separate video and now cutting these guys if anything just makes the need even bigger so that is scary but i do love the fact that this regime is not accepting average or decent they are not settling unlike that previous regime they're not sticking with what's comfortable they are trying to bring in certified steppers they're not accepting mediocrity because it's safe they're trying to upgrade this team every way possible they're going to be very strategic they're going to be very aggressive but most importantly they're going to put in a lot of effort to building this team it just felt like a lot of it was laziness with the previous regime like eh, we got somebody that's at least decent at it so i just like the fact that this regime is like no we're not accepting anything less than great from every position group but just like the leno cut i hope they have a plan in place to get this replacement dog because when healthy logan thomas was our most proven tight end at the very least we are taking a weakness on our team and making it an even bigger weakness at this point. I'm very optimistic that the new commanders regime will get it right and they'll figure this out. But it's still very interesting. It's still pretty scary as a fan to see big weaknesses that we already had on our team get even bigger. 
So that's definitely something to keep in the back of your mind. But I'm assuming that we have a plan here. We have some go-to guys. We've been talking to agents at the combine and things like that. We have some guys we're targeting in free agency and the draft. We'll get to that later in the video. But at least with tight end, though, different from tackle, we at least have some talent in that room. With tackle, after cutting Charles Leno and the fact that Cornelius Lucas is an unrestricted free agent, we literally don't even have a guy that can truly actually play left tackle for us at the moment. I mean, maybe some people bring up the name like a Trent Scott, but I don't know about that, man. I really don't. But at least with tight end, we have some guys that this coaching staff, with as good as I believe they're going to be at developing players, could actually find some answers that's already currently in this position group we may not even need to panic and sign an expensive free agent in the in the um, free agency period that's coming up in less than two weeks or draft a guy like very high in the draft like first round or maybe not even second we'll see just some good old-fashioned development may do the trick for this team right here man may be able to fill that hole with guys that are already currently on the roster just simply because this is a way better coaching staff than what we've had in the burgundy and gold for arguably my entire lifetime so now let's talk about the cap savings and the cap space update as far as what happened after we cut logan thomas so after cutting charles leno we gained an additional 7.28 million in cap space. Now, after cutting Logan Thomas, we gained an additional $6.5 million in cap space. Well, really like 6.54. Without cutting him, he would have hit us for like 8.29 million against the cap. Now, after we cut him, we get $6.54 million of that money back with a little bit of dead cap right there, a little less than 2 million. And again, like I said in the Charles Leno video that I did earlier today, I don't know what the Bears and Patriots did, but we went from number one in cap space for the really all the way up until like I guess a few days ago in the entire offseason to third before we cut Leno. And then after cutting Charles Leno, we moved up to second. And then now after cutting Logan Thomas, and just to let you know, Charles Leno was our fourth highest paid player on our roster. Logan Thomas was our sixth. So this just seems even more obvious. And then even go beyond that, Nick Gates is our seventh. We'll talk about that again later. And then now you also have Tress Way, who is now currently our eighth highest cap hit as a punter. So again, I talked about why he could potentially be a cap casualty. Be on the lookout for that. I hope not. I like Tress Way, but I've already explained and brought some stats in another video like a couple of weeks ago, breaking down why he could be a cap casualty. Go check out that cap space update from a while ago because I talk about that in that video. But instead of getting too far ahead of myself, that's another discussion for another day. Now, after cutting Logan Thomas... We have gone from second in cap space to now back up to having the most cap space in the NFL, number one again, as made official by at my sports update. I believe you pronounce his name as Ari Myrov. I believe that's how you pronounce it. But he tweeted out the commanders now have a league high $91 million in cap space after re releasing both Logan Thomas and Charles Leno. $91 million, y'all? Oh, yeah, we could do some damage in free agency if they really want to. If they really plan to, they got it. I don't know for 100% sure that we will, but boy, we for sure have the money on us now if we want to. And we have some big needs at tackle and edge rusher, along with other positions that we need to upgrade. Like need, not want to, need to. And if they want to attack it in free agency, they can. And this should not be a surprise to anybody, y'all. New regimes taking over a team usually means that veteran players, especially the ones with without a lot of guaranteed money, are likely to get cut. This is just something that happens with most regime transitions, going from GM to new GM, old head coach to new head coach and all that type of stuff. That just typically, this is not a commander's only thing. This is something that usually happens and it should have been very predictable. I feel like even if Ron Rivera, Martin Mayhew and all of those guys were still here, that Logan Thomas and Charles Leno were quite likely to get cut for the reasons I've already explained. But then the fact that it's a new regime just pretty much made it obvious that this was destined to happen. It was only just a matter of time. And I guess it took for us to go to the combine to be able to talk to other teams agents other teams personnel decision makers gms head coaches and things like that to get a feel for what the market is potentially as far as positions we need in free agency or maybe even the draft like who who out of the all of the teams at the combine who's potentially thinking about taking tackle and when can we find a way to hopefully one of the tackles we really like to potentially drop to us to where we don't have to trade up to get them maybe that's one of the angles we could take so that's why this combine is huge that's why we're sending everybody there we sent like 10 top commanders guys there 
let alone the owner, the general manager, the head coach, and then of course a bunch of scouts and everything as well. But we're taking like Bob Myers. We're taking everybody that has anything to do with the decision making for the commanders. And this is why. Not only is it is it just the football guys that are watching the combine, checking for the measurables, like my guy Eugene Shin and things like that, but it's also guys that know how to shake hands and have healthy relationships with agents and other teams around the NFL. They're out there networking and things like that. So we may potentially have some plans behind the scene to get some finesses going and to fix these position groups in free agency and the draft now speaking of free agency in the draft let's start there let's start with free agency man so some of the top free agent tight ends that are available and you could argue the tight end free agency class may be even a little bit better and deeper than the tackle class tackle class worries me a little bit there's a few guys out there like i mentioned in my charles Leno video if you want to know about that go back and check that out because we did a full dive in that video just like we're about to do for this video for tight ends but the tight end group man they got some guys and dalton schultz of the houston texans will be a great idea that man was great last year for the texans that boy bobby Sloat got a lot of greatness out of him he was very integral to cj stroud's development and success and what led him to an offensive rookie of the year campaign dalton schultz was a big part of that man with the texans in 2023 schultz caught 59 passes for 635 yards and five touchdowns his 635 receiving yards were the second most he's recorded in a single season because remember he caught 78 passes for eight yards eight touchdowns with the dallas cowboys in 2021 the 2022 he had somewhat of like a slightly down year and then he went to the texans and balled out once again how about we go get him and speaking of going to get him if you want to his market value is estimated to be like a three-year deal worth 34 million which is like 11.3 million per year which would make him the 11th highest paid tight end in the nfl at that point of signing them unless something changes other tight ends get signed before him or whatever but just from a snapshot of today what free agency looks like and how much tight ends are getting paid around the nfl right now he would become the 11th highest paid tight end if he were to get a contract like that and i would for sure be willing to give that man 11.3 million dollars per year out of the 91 million we have to go ahead and secure one of the better tight ends in the nfl especially for potentially a rookie quarterback coming in they're gonna need their safety blanket they're gonna need that and cliff kingsbury showed with the way that he used zach Ertz in 2021 that he can get a lot out of a tight end even though originally like the air raid system naturally at its very core likes a lot of five wide receiver sets not really having tight ends on the field as much then the cardinals traded for zach Ertz, and cliff kingsbury has zach Ertz out there looking like a pro bowler again and i believe he could do the same thing potentially with dalton schultz and a lot of other guys that we're going to talk about in this video moving forward also if you look at cbs sports when they talk about dalton schultz they say his top free agency landing spots are the texans commanders and Bengals. and i think that's really interesting because the texans are of course the team that he's already currently on maybe it'll just be easier for him to resign there but outside of the texans which is the team that he's already on they pin the commanders and the Bengals as the teams that make the most sense for him and the most likely to land them i like it then number two they have hunter henry as for the new england patriots his market value is somewhere around like 7.5 million i think he would be a decent option i'm just worried about his injury concerns because remember back on the charges people were acting like he was like a top five top eight tight end in the nfl maybe even better but then injuries just kept kept hitting them and then the patriots has just done a gr terrible job of getting tight ends involved mac jones hasn't been a good quarterback bill belichick fell off maybe you could argue that it was more so tom brady than bill belichick this whole time just by the fact that when tom brady left the patriots just completely collapsed but either way hunter henry has not been very good i mean in 2016 as a rookie for the charges he took off and was so great for them and then he had the lacerated kidney he's had a torn acl he's had a knee fracture it's scary man he's coming in with baggage so i guess that's maybe a guy that you can look at but i'm not too thrilled about him then speaking of the chargers you also and now that the los angeles Chargers, back when hunter henry was there they were the san diego Chargers. you also have gerald everett and another guy that when you look on CBS Sports, they say one of his top landing spots are the Commanders. They're estimating him to get a two-year deal worth $17.4 million, which would give him like an $8.6 million per year deal, which would make him, out of the guys that we're talking about, out of the top five guys we're going to talk about, he has the fifth, the third highest value, um, according to Spot Track potentially in his next contract. Would y'all be willing to give Gerald Everett $8.6 million per year? I need to do more film study on Gerald Everett, because for some reason his name just doesn't exist excite me but maybe i'm missing something so far between the top three guys i've talked about dalton schultz easily is my favorite option there even though he is potentially a little under three million 
dollars more expensive per year than a Dalton Schultz I'd be willing to pay that gap I mean if I could fundraise it myself I would then you also have Mike Gusecki another Patriots tight end a lot of talent coming from the Dolphins more so used as like a big bigger slot receiver if anything more so than like a dual threat tight end that can block but he's still a really good tight end we'll see how much money he commands in free agency he had a 4.8 million dollar contract last season and he'll probably ask for something similar to that maybe a little bit more but that's still very cheap if you want to give Mike Gusecki a chance because three years ago you would have never have gotten Mike Gusecki for 4.8 million dollars in a season but now there's a reason that you could potentially get him for that so I'm not sure about that and then for some reason CBS Sports has Noah Fant as their fifth best tight end available in free agency I would argue he's the best tight end in free agency available especially if we're talking ceiling especially if we're doing this whole get rid of the old and the veterans let's bring in a whole bunch of young guys let's start a youth movement let's go for athleticism let's go for ceiling let's go for guys that just with natural talent that need to be developed because we trust our coaching staff that much that's why we're paying these guys all of this money that's why we went to go get proven guys that are ex-offensive coordinators ex-defensive coordinators ex-head coaches and asking them to come here to just simply be positional coaches we're bringing in guys with ridiculous loads of experience developing players scouting the right guys knowing which guys to bring that fit their system the best what was the point of doing all of that if we're not going to take any chances on any elite talents just simply because we're worried about their potential to fail and I feel like Noah Fant is the perfect example of a guy that we need to go get at all costs man and I'm pretty sure even though spot track doesn't exactly know his market value because a lot of people for some reason aren't looking for him and I already did like a full 20 30 minute breakdown on why we should sign Noah Fant well technically it was like a 30 minute video talked about two people so he was like 15 minutes of it but I already did a full breakdown on that if you want that I brought up stats I brought up a lot of things in there but just know Noah Fant is my favorite tight end signing potentially that the commanders can get that's my dream case scenario just off the ceiling Dalton Schultz brings the highest floor in my opinion Noah Fant brings the highest ceiling I would love to get him man I mean he's so young too man he I <laughs> I just feel like getting Dalton Schultz and Zach and no offense. I mean, hey, if you could afford them both, man, we wouldn't have to worry about tight end any more. That would immediately fix the problem. And then let's talk about the draft and why I feel like we wouldn't sign two guys. It's like either Dalton Schultz or Noah Fant or maybe neither of those guys. And then we just seriously attack tight end in the draft. But I doubt it because I've talked about this before in several videos already, especially like my videos where I've broken down like the NFL rumors that like some of its commanders for the most part, it's like for everybody, any fan base to watch because it's all of the rumors surrounding the draft right now, how people value the tight end position specifically where Jatavion Sanders people expect him to go and quarterback rumors going around who likes who Falcons potentially want to trade up Giants want to trade up I did a whole video breakdown on all of those different rumors it, um from I think I guess it was like two three videos ago at this point but it came out earlier today but it's just so much going on so check that out if you want to but I talked about in that video and other videos that tight end honestly has the biggest gap from the best player at that position group to the second has definitely by far has the biggest drop off I mean wide receiver Marvin Harrison Jr. is different but a lot of people feel like Malik Neighbors at worst is wide receiver 1B not even 2 it's like really close neck to neck and some people especially after the fact that Malik Neighbors is going to actually run in the 40 time probably going to kill his combine and Marvin Harrison Jr. isn't even participating some people feel like Malik Na Neighbors actually may secretly be the best wide receiver in this draft class so even even with as good as Marvin Harrison Jr. is wide receiver not a big gap from one to two tackle some people love Joe Alt some people love JC Latham some people love Olu Fashanu and again Amarius Mims has the highest ceiling I've seen from a tackle coming out of college in years at least at least in the past couple of years so that position is up in the air quarterback at whoever you ask most people I feel like think that Caleb Williams is the number one quarterback but then some people think Jaden Daniels is number one some people think Drake May is number one there's the base there that position group is up in the air running back there's no clear-cut number one I mean I don't even think any running back is going to get taken within the first two rounds honestly at all with the way that the position group is devalued on top of the fact that there is no Bijan Robinson or Jameer Gibbs in this draft class that it looks like right now I mean of course once guys get drafted they go to the right system in the NFL maybe they just 
flash out of nowhere and they're extremely productive and they look like oh man they should have been first round picks but as of right now what it's looking like and again based on those rumors i was talking about it doesn't look like any running backs gonna take get taken anytime soon so they're out of contention anyway in this discussion then what other position group you want to go with db there's debates there defensive line edge rusher linebacker there's debates all over the place tight end is the only position group in this draft where there's a clear-cut number one and then there's a big gap and then there's number two and everybody else so of course number one is my georgia bulldog brock bowers as a matter of fact i think i got some georgia merch right here just to shout my boy out man i hope he kills his combine let's get it man let's go but even beyond that outside of brock bowers who some people feel like is going to go in the top 10. I feel like he's a top four talent in the draft, but you know, it's the tight end position. A lot of people devalue it. I feel like it's far more valuable than people give it credit for, but y'all see, you'll learn later once you see Brock Bowers balling out, the fact that everybody should never have passed up on him, but it is what it is. And then after that, who's projected to go in top 10, depending on where you ask, who, where you're looking, who you ask, as far as all of this draft coverage goes, a lot of people feel like Jatavion Sanders is like obviously tight end number two but a lot of people feel like he's not even worth going in the first round and may even make it to the third round maybe like late second or something like that we may have brock bowers going top 10 in the first round and then not another tight end taken in this draft until like the middle of the second round and that my point is is great news for the commanders because it looks like we're more than likely going to take quarterback second overall Jaden daniels drake may more than likely and then we we have this huge need to tackle right now so unless we go get like a tyron smith from the cowboys or something like that and i explored other options in free agency in my charles leno cut video so if you want to go check that out you can but just say if we don't get an elite tackle in free agency you're gonna have to take tackle in the second round with that first second round pick that we have that's our own not even like the bears one that comes soon after that we and maybe you need to take that second round pick and package a, a third or maybe even the other second to trade back up into the first round to get a tackle we need left tackle that bad so then it's kind of like what pick will we even have to even get a tight end that will start for us that's why i'm saying we need to go tight end very aggressively in free agency don't come back without at least noah fan and or dalton schultz because tight end right now not looking too good i mean Jatavion Sanders may be available in the middle of the second round, but we need tackle and edge rusher and, and arguably quarterback since we have the second overall pick with the elite talent that's there so bad that when will we be able to even have a pick to use on tight end? So then you have my boy Cade Stover from Ohio State. A lot of people are seeing him as like a 70 overall player so maybe we can get him in the third round y'all know me man if y'all been following my mock drafts i've mocked Cade stover to us at least three times since like november i love Cade stover i feel like he can literally be a slightly faster sam laporta and then with him being ranked like somewhere in the 70s maybe upper 60s maybe early 80s on a lot of draft boards maybe we can get him in the third round that would be a home run hitter to me and then you also maybe have like a jaheem bell who may be available in like the 110s you have ben sanat a lot of people love him may be available in the 110s as well or in the hundreds we can get to like maybe get them day three potentially early day three or something like that so there's some options there there's definitely some options but we'll see but draft wise it's not looking too pretty. I'm not going to lie because we just have other needs we need to prioritize. But don't forget that we do have Adam Peters as our general manager. I feel like this is very important because he finds all pro and pro bowl talent in rounds three through seven, arguably better than any other NFL mind in the NFL. And then even specifically tight end wise, he literally drafted George Kittle himself in the fifth round. That was literally his idea along with a lot of other future hall of famers in between rounds three through seven but specifically tight end he found george kittle in the fifth can he repeat that magic here who knows so maybe we don't need to panic and spend too much money in free agency or trade up in the draft to solve the tackle and tight end positions that the holes that we have right now who knows maybe we could just trust adam peters to scout and draft the right guys throughout every round we'll see and we also have what i believe to be a coaching staff that can develop and get the most out of talent as well so i feel like anybody we draft we can lean towards us potentially reaching their ceiling getting closer to their ceiling than their floor so i'm excited out of the way but those are just some options that we have out there also don't forget we have some guys on this roster that could potentially develop into some really good tight ends already here like already on the roster making cheap money rookie deal money type stuff 
I mean, first of all, unlike left tackle, at tight end, we at least have one guy with a decent floor in John Bates who can certainly at least block and also catch some open passes. But it's not necessarily like a dual threat tight end, a game changer, the guy that Eugene Shin or Cliff Kingsbury or Adam Peters really wants. But at least he's playable. At edge rusher, is literally KJ Henry and a pile of hope. At left tackle, especially with Cornelius Lucas as an unrestricted free agent, it's literally Andrew Wiley and friends as far as our entire tackle group. And left tackle, I don't know. Trent Scott, I guess. I, I mean, I don't know. And I'm not even sure about Andrew Wiley himself. So we may even need left tackle and right tackle in this free agency. But at tight end, at least we have somewhat of a floor with John Bates. Like, we can only be but so bad with John Bates there, I feel like, which is an advantage we have in the tight end room that we don't have in edge rusher in the tackle room right now but also on top of all of that the ceiling of cole turner and armani rogers don't sleep y'all know armani rogers is my guy and i believe he's literally a darren waller type of ceiling like i think if we coach him up he could literally be that but he did suffer a severe leg injury last offseason so who knows if he's the same freak athlete that he was that same matchup nightmare that i loved him to be and everybody started to notice once we started to give him the ball a little bit but he did say in the exit interviews at the end of the season after we took that embarrassing last l against the cowboys to end the 2023 season right before ron rivera got fired he said in his exit interviews that he's back fully healthy he should be good to go i'm excited to hear that but i gotta see it before i believe it and then you also have cole turner who balls out every offseason and then for some reason just doesn't get used in the regular season and last year with eric Bieniemy as our offensive coordinator he was criminally underutilized like it was insane i mean there were some games he was inactive i'm like what are we doing we have nothing to gain at a certain point in this season where we're clearly not making the playoffs why not throw cole turner out there and keep throwing him the ball because what do we have to lose i love cole turner's receiving ability and he's been making big strides as a blocker as well he's trying to become a true dual threat tight end I'm very confused as to why he wasn't featured heavily in the offense last year and not even to be featured even just a little bit is just insane to me. I don't get it. But even then, I would still attack tight end in potentially both the draft and free agency. But with the natural talent that we have here already and my optimism that Cliff Kingsbury can get greatness out of them and utilize them like he did with Zach Ertz in 2021 and the fact that we have an elite development coaching staff, I'm expecting the people to literally just get turn these players that we already have into better overalls just simply because this is a different coaching staff from the last one like I feel like honestly if you see Cole Turner as like a 68 overall I think he'll be like a 76 at worst just simply because this is a new coaching staff that not only is going to develop them better but also use them better in the offense and get the most out of them put them into positions to succeed and things like that so i do feel like whoever we already have now is going to be better for us and it won't seem as much like a weakness even without even separate from adding anybody to the group through free agency or the draft just simply because of improved coaching staff but you never know maybe we either sign tight end in free agency or we take a tight end like a Jatavion Sanders in the second round. Or maybe potentially my favorite scenario where we'd sign like a Noah Fan in free agency and then draft like a Cade Stover maybe in like the third or fourth round. That would be my best case scenario, me personally. But it's going to be interesting to see these next couple of months to see how this regime feels about these guys that we already have here. Because if they see the vision like I do, if we share the same vision, even if they don't tell us out loud, they will definitely show us with the moves that they make or the lack thereof with how they attack in free agency within the next couple of, it's within less than two weeks free agency starts. And especially by the time we get out of rounds one through three, if we haven't taken a tight end yet in the draft or didn't sign a big one in free agency, that will be very telling. And basically they're telling us through action that they actually really like the talent that we already have on the roster i doubt that's how that plays out i'm pretty sure we're probably even going to get a guy in both free agency and the draft but if we don't that just shows how much they believe in those guys and that means they will believe in those guys even more than i do but we'll see you never know maybe cliff kingsbury and our offensive staff along with general manager adam peters feel the same way our defensive staff feels like when they said that they have the logic that maybe we don't necessarily need new players we don't need to overreact and overpay for some veterans in free agency 
maybe some of these guys already have the potential to be great and the previous regime just didn't do a good job of developing them nor putting them in the best positions to succeed as often as possible and maybe the answer instead of going to get outside talent is growing the talent that you already currently have rather than adding in new guys because Joey Jr. already said that he was looking like yeah maybe we could get some additional cornerback depth or something like that but we don't need to go out and get like a starting cornerback necessarily for big money in free agency because we feel like we're so confident in our ability to coach and develop that we feel like as soon as we can get our hands on Emmanuel Forbes, Quan Martin, Benjamin St. Juice, and all of these guys, they could be starting level corners, really good corners. And again, like I said, in my own way, we're going to raise their overalls from Emmanuel Forbes, like a 63 to maybe like an 85 overall, looking like one of the better corners in the NFL, just off of the play style. We're going to have a pass rush develop, hopefully, when we sign some edge rushers. And we're going to allow these corners to be just as aggressive for the commanders as they were for the Dallas Cowboys with Trevon Diggs and Deron Bland out there getting pick sixes left and right i can see that potentially in the future of like an emmanuel forbes and those guys and maybe the offense feels the same way about a lot of different position groups especially tight end because if you want to talk about which position group we have like the most untapped potential talent in, you can argue is tight end out of any position group on this team like between armani rogers and cole turner alone that's ridiculous ceiling right there that unfortunately the previous regime didn't do a good enough job of getting out of them but armani rogers in his case he was hurt so i don't i can't blame them for that one but cole turner was insane that he wasn't utilized more and then me personally I prefer a lot of both. I say don't take any chances, especially since those are literally the guys that I keep naming are Marty Rogers, John Bates, and Cole Turner. I'm only listing those names because those are literally the only three tight ends we have on roster right now. So I say go get somebody in free agency and the draft. Walk in to training camp with at least five or six guys, and then maybe you can cut it down to like three or four when we get to the 53-man roster. We'll see, but I feel like you need to do both, but only time will tell, man. And also, before we get up out of here, man, why did the Commanders announce Logan Thomas's release with this picture, man? Like, come on, dog. Y'all got to do better than that, man. What's wrong with y'all? Like, why they got to look at like something bad happened to Buddy? They, I mean, they, he looked like he belonged on a shirt, man. I don't want to say the word because I don't want to put that type of energy out there in the air or whatever. But golly, man, y'all got Logan Thomas looking like it's over with for cuz, man. I just... Like, man, if I'm Logan Thomas, I'm hitting up the commanders like, man, don't play with me like that, dog. Take that down. Put a different picture up. Don't make it look like I'm I'm gone, gone type of thing, man. If I were him, I'd be highly offended. Also, before we get up out of here, I do want to thank Logan Thomas and acknowledge the fact that he was a really good story, man. Switching from quarterback to tight end very early on his career paid off big time for him. And but unfortunately, bad luck kept hitting him. He kept missing games due to injury. He missed 15 games over the last three seasons. And that's not good, man. And it's just time for the commanders to move on and start a youth movement. But man, Logan Thomas, I really do appreciate you. Also, even though we do have a lot of cap space, I do want to reiterate the fact that I'm not sure if we just go out and spend all of it this offseason and just go out there and go crazy. But whoever they want, if they do want them bad enough, we definitely have the cap space to go get them. I mean, of course, outside of franchise tags, we'll see how that goes. But anybody that we want, we have the money to go get. So keep that in mind. We'll see how aggressive they are. If they want to be, they can be. And that has me excited. Also, Grant Paulson brings up a great point. Adam Peters did tell us that he didn't want to go into free agency with a big spending spree. But Grant Paulson also brings up the fact that he may not have much of a choice. So little money on the books. Tressway is their highest paid player as a punter. He's not even getting paid a lot of money. They've got historic cap space in Washington, D.C. terms. They're going to have to add a slew of quality players in free agency. Even if you don't go off their top big guys like a Brian Burns or Josh Allen at free agency, like a Jonathan Grenard at, at edge rusher in free agency, or a Dalton Schultz and Noah Fant at tight end, or a Tyron Smith at tackle or whatever, you're going to have to spend this money somewhere because we literally just don't have guys. We only have like 40 something people on roster right now you're, you're supposed to get up to 90 for throughout the off season and of course we're going to narrow it down to 53 but say if we had a game tomorrow we don't even have enough players to go play a game right now like we gotta go out there and spend money it's just a matter of how much money do we spend on each individual person do we spend a lot of money on one player and, and well several different players one each at different position groups or do we just get, do a whole bunch of bargain bin shopping we'll see it may be like a blend of both 
But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know if you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please stiff arm that like button, stiff arm the subscription button, and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Man, I really appreciate y'all. I'm already working on the Nick Gates video. That's why you see me looking to the side right now. I'm super excited to go ahead and get to work on that. We're about to go ahead and knock that one out. So as soon as I'm done editing this and getting this out, I'm immediately working on the Nick Gates video as well. I'm about to start looking up some stats and things like that for him. Go ahead and get to work and also start to look for some potential potential center um free agency guys that we could bring in to replace him maybe through the draft as well we're going to talk about draft and we're going to also of course look at who we currently have on the roster just like the tight end position just like we did in this video that may be able to step up most notably like a ricky strongberg or maybe even a tyler larson so make sure y'all stay tuned for that video and many more videos on the way especially tonight just alone tonight i have more videos on the way so stay tuned i really appreciate y'all let me know in the comment section how you feel about everything discussed in this video are you happy about us cutting logan thomas are you happy about us having the most cap space in the NFL? fell again and how do you feel about any of the draft targets that i gave you any of the free agency targets that i gave you how do you feel about the chances of the commanders potentially being very aggressive in free agency even though this is their first year as our new regime and we're technically rebuilding slash recalibrating let me know let me know how you feel about our chances of being aggressive in free agency and going to get a lot of the top guys that we name let me know who your favorite guys in free agency potentially are and the draft of course i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out